Tonight's program is um, is really for police officers and anyone who is a friend of police officers. I need you to take this information to them and wake them up. Um, because police officers, I'm sorry, um, but you cannot give um, radicals even more power and credibility by standing with them. You can be for teachers or collective bar, you can be for anything, but you cannot stand with people that are doing the things that I'm going to show you next. By now, on this program, you, you've come to know Van Jones as a radical revolutionary, a communist, a, a cop killer, a Mount, a Mumia Abu Jamal supporter, a former green jobs czar at the White House, progressive activist, advocate of the top down, bottom up, inside out, the heart part, fundamental transpar transformation plan for America. And now he is an important part of a new high school curriculum that your students in New York State may be enjoying right now. Speak truth to power. Thanks to Kyle Olson from publicschoolspending.com for bringing this to my attention. December 10th, over 1,000 New York school students took part in the inaugural webcast of Speak Truth to Power curriculum. It was distributed by the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights and New York State United Teachers. Well, okay, those don't sound bad, right? And the, the book here, the curriculum, features lessons on focusing on corporate greed, landmine awareness, Chinese labor camps, and abolishing the death penalty. The death penalty, no bias there. We're not sure how this will raise student test scores in math, reading, and science, or boost graduation rates, but according to the, um, the teachers' union in New York, according to their blog, the curriculum introduces general human rights issues and urges students to become personally involved, personally involved in the protection of human rights. Well, now, guess who has an entire section here because we've got a lot of people here on the front we have desmond tutu uh we have the dalai lama uh we have uh oh wait we have van jones van jones the curriculum legitimately uh features uh people like uh ellie weisel who survived the holocaust his message should be heard but van jones where's the van jones here it is here's van jones looking all pious on this one, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Van Jones, um, here's the kind of uh, wisdom that you have coming from, from Van Jones in this. It's the wisdom about police in New York that uh, your kids can get in the Van Jones section. Ready? A guy is kicked, he's stopped, he's pepper sprayed, gagged because the police don't want him bleeding on them, and then left in a cell. Well, that's the sort of stuff you'd expect in Guatemala, but it's happened just 15 or 20 minutes from here. I didn't see that anywhere. That the police side of the story was told in this, but don't worry, I'm sure one side of every story is just plenty. In a section titled, Who Do You Think Is Protecting You? Van presents the International De Declaration of Human Rights. I'm sorry the right to life and liberty and personal security, freedom from torture and degrading treatment. Are we insinuating that the police are torturing and degrading? How do you define degrading? And it goes on. 120 minutes is devoted to the objectives in this lesson, including know who Van Jones is and why he's a human rights defender. Understand the issue of police brutality within the U.S. and internationally. One of the activities of the lesson is uh, after the budget analysis. You're supposed to ask students to research websites that will provide information on incarcerated men, women, and youth. This is where it goes all dicey because I want to show you the websites that are linked to this curriculum and then we'll show you who's paying for it. Police officers know it. Next. I've just told you about a shocking school curriculum in New York that features uh, an entire section of Van Jones. And I'm going to give it to you as lessons here in a second. But I, as I'm, 
I'm going through this, I, I want you to notice a pattern here. Here are the radicals, and they all have brushed their teeth and combed their hair and put on ties, and they've dropped the radical pose for the radical ends. And apparently nobody pays attention to little things like, oh, I don't know, here's the International Socialist Organization logo, and here is the AFL-CIO logo. Well, what do you think they have in common? I mean, I think maybe an attorney with a, you know, some sort of an idea on copyright or trademark law should call. Radicals always are laundered. And in that laundry, they always see AFL-CIO or SEIU come up. And then to really finish the job, the launder, the trusted shield, calls in the unaware reserves. And in this case, it's teachers, firefighter, and police. There's a reason why the teachers and the firefighters and the police are being used right now. Back to this, Van Jones. One of Van Jones' lessons for students is in this curriculum that is all throughout um, the schools in high school in New York, and it's right here, materials. And one of them is uh, lessons for a killing. And in it, Van Jones asks students to ponder the anti-fascist info bulletin. Now, what is that? Well, it documents police abuse, abuse of prisoners, and other abuses of power in North America. The political rhetoric may be off-putting at times, but as the experience in San Francisco has shown, the practice of using police violence to punish and intimidate lawful political dissident is alive and well in the, quote, free, end quote, world. That's what he writes. And then he adds this. After he's talking about the police in, Amer in America, the final paragraph is this, who knows? Had American citizens taken the reports issued by communist and socialist newspapers in Europe during the 1930s seriously, the rise of the Nazis in Germany and the fascists in Italy might not have been so smooth. So are we comparing Mr. Jones? Fascists and Nazis to the American police force? Yes, kids, if we would just have listened to the communist and the socialist, what a great world this would be. And then as part of the lesson activity, students are directed to go to certain websites. Oh, these websites are great. We, there's a sample of them uh, linked to uh, policecrimes.com, which uh, includes uh, policecrimes.com includes this gem. There is a special place in hell for the following law enforcement agencies, and I hope that every agent and officer from these agencies involved in the Waco incident dies a slow and painful death. These agencies are some of the most dangerous groups of people in America. Remember, the police agencies. And are a threat to all Americans. Protect your families from these police agencies. It continues on to say, if these people can murder innocent people, women, and children, just imagine what they're capable of doing to your family. Hey, kids. Any law enforcement agency that refuses to follow the U.S. Constitution should be hung by the neck until dead. Wow, can you imagine if I said that? But I'm not saying that. I'm just showing you what they're teaching the kids in New York schools. Now, there's one more site that he advocates. And that's when my jaw dropped on the floor. Oh, but we're, we won't be done there. Because I'm going to show you that website, and then I'm going to show you who's printing this. Next. We're talking about a curriculum that uh, Van Jones authored part of it. It's now available to New York State teachers from the Robert F. Kennedy Center for Justice and Human Rights and NYSUT, a union of professionals. Who are they? Teachers Union. And the Robert F. Kennedy Center, uh, or Robert F. Uh, Kennedy Center. Now, Van Jones' curriculum on police brutality. I was telling you that it lists additional sources for students. He suggests that the students visit one of another site, uh, this one here. It's called MostlyWater.org. Here's what's at MostlyWater.org. Check it out. You'll love it, especially police officers. Remember, you're standing with this man. 
Mostly water. March 15th is Police Brutality Day. It's actually F Police Brutality Day. And it happens all day. On this website, you'll also find this. The excuse of a few bad apples is a myth. The tree is rotten. The institution of policing itself is the problem. Police systematically use and grossly abuse their power at their disposal to criminalize and otherwise brutalize queer and trans, trans peoples, communities living in poverty. Wow, that's kind of a really, wow. Activist, indigenous and radicalized communities, those without status, people living with disabilities, drug users, and those living with uh, mental health issues. 2010, they say, was the year of the riot. 2011 is set to be the year of insurrection. Stay tuned for more details as March 15th approaches and join us in the streets. This is great, isn't it? This is great. Are there bad cops? Yes. And those few should be punished. Bad apples must be removed, but they are a few bad apples. Equal justice for all, including police, good and bad. You have the radicals that you would never, ever stand with. You'd never stand with so students from a democratic society. You'd never stand with the Freedom Road Socialist Organization or the Palestinian Solidarity Group or this group, Mostly Water. You'd never do it. But these are all linked in books now for our schools by the Robert F. Kennedy School and NYSUT. What is that? Teachers Union. Teachers Union that actually is the AFL-CIO. AFL-CIO money, put this together, the teachers union. They are the ones that are coming together. By the way, the International Police Union, AFL-CIO, why would they be eating their own? These people here hate these people here. These are the people, this one, organizing against U.S. wars across the world since 1988. These are the people that you stand here as a cop and go, I can't believe I'm protecting these guys. But you do it because you're full of honor. And you are actually standing next to these people. But this guy, this guy, this guy, and the FOP are convincing you that, no, you're just standing here. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because as you see... These people are these people. You must make sure you know who you're standing with. And it's the lesson. If history teaches us anything, or at least teaches me anything, it's that people do eventually wake up. But by the time they do, the hour is usually so late that it makes the price of the struggle much higher than it had to be. Hunter, thanks for the help from New York. Good night, America.